We are now joined by a very special guest. Can we call him a legend? I think we're going to. Legendary investor Peter Lynch. He is with us from Boston this morning to share his perspective on the economy, markets, and the work he's doing for the Catholic Schools Foundation. Peter, of course, is the vice chairman of Fidelity Management and Research and advisory board member of Fidelity Funds. From 1977 to 1990, he managed the Magellan Fund, growing it from, you ready for this, $20 million dollars to $14 billion in 1990 at the time of his retirement. Buy what you know is what Peter taught us, and it's so nice to see you this morning, Peter. Good to be here. So let's talk about buy what you know. I'm so curious these days how you're thinking about the economy. Well, I think people, they're investing in individual stocks. It's, it's sad they're careful when they buy a refrigerator or an airplane flight. Or they're careful with their money, and they'll hear about a stock on the bus and they'll put five or $10,000 on it. They have no idea what they do. So you really got to be careful. Look at the company. Look at the balance sheet. What is the reason the stock should be higher? The sucker's going up. It's not a good reason. Is your sense, though, that the style of investing uh, that you pioneered is still doable and winnable today? Well, I think looking for something different, looking for something that's a good story. I mean, who would have guessed TJX, a local company, would have gone up 50-fold, or Stop and Shop would go up 10-fold, or, or analog devices, or NVIDIA. I couldn't pronounce NVIDIA. So you, you have to find a company that's either a turnaround or a company that's going to grow, like Panera or, you know, Family Dollar Stores. I'm not saying that buys now, but that's what's made our, you know, Sears has rolled over, so, you know, so has Kmart's rolled over, IBM slowed down. But we've had new companies come along. I mean, that's the nature. You have to be looking for new companies and look at the balance sheet. If you can add five and five and get reasonably close to 10, you should be able to look at the balance sheet and say, here's two depressed companies. They've gone from 50 to three. One company's got three million in cash and no debt. One's got three million in debt, no cash. Which one are you going to buy? I mean, that's that, not too hard to do. Peter, I, I watched, watched you closely because I was in the business back then, and I don't know. Do you remember how many SNLs went from mutuals to stock trade that you made just buku bucks on back then? I mean, I don't yeah. know if you I don't know if you missed any of those, and they were all big winners. <laughs> uh, they, they, they're all big well, winners. They were all big winners back then. I just, what do you think of the financial sector right now and what happened? We saw with First Republic, and uh, I I'd just yeah. like to get your insight there since you you were so good at well, that sector. You know, we had a terrible financial crisis and. 99 to 1. I think every, almost every major bank in Texas went under. Bank of New England, one of the oldest banks in the country, went under. It's like, you know, you know in 08, 09, the banks were doing these no-dock loans and second mortgages and home improvement loans, and people were, were buying boats with it. Now the banks are being much more careful. So we've gone through other crises. Some banks will go under. You know, 400 went under after 08, 09. Now we have stress tests. I think the banking system has improved. There'll be some companies going under. That's the, that's the nature of it. You know, it's nothing like, imagine 1980-81, we had double-digit inflation, double-digit unemployment, and people were the Japanese were going to take over the world. I mean, we were hopeless. I mean, you know, there's always something to worry about. I'd really, in my over 50 years of doing this, I, I think I'd be worried if there was... You know, somebody didn't bring up something to worry about. That's well, you, the nature you of the business. A, I, I, I was joking because I'm a Reagan guy, you know, and I was there. I started it at Merrill in 1981. So huh. I remember I remember what happened. Yeah. I remember my feelings in 1981, and I remember my feelings, how wow. I felt by 1985. Ugly. And you had a huh. tailwind. I had a tailwind because of what we did. We're not going to do that again. We're not going to cut taxes. We're not going to. Uh, stimulate the private sector. We're, we're kind of headed the other way. Did, did you have a tailwind? Is, will we ever have a tailwind again with this generation? Well, we've had 13 recessions since World War II, and we've had 13 recoveries. Maybe we're going to have one. If this is a recession, it's probably the most predicted one ever. You know, I never know when we're going to go. I, I'd love to know the future. I'd, I think I'd give, it would help. I'd be a better investor. I'd pay five extra dollars for next year's Wall Street Journal. It would really help. Right. I cannot predict the future, but this one, this recession is so expected, so predicted, maybe it's coming. I don't know.